Welcome back to Seeing More of the Universe. I'm your host, Alyssa Goodman. In this short video, we're going to focus just on a few key ideas from this very important book called The Visual Display of Quantitative Information by Edward Tufte. This book is as close to a Bible of data visualization as exists today, even though it was first published in 1983. There's a wonderful story of how Edward Tufte, a professor in political science at Yale, got so fed up with how his colleagues presented their data that he wrote this book and became a full-time guru of data visualization, but I don't have time to tell you that story today. Instead, I'm going to just focus on a small number of absolutely key ideas from the book and give you one brief look at an example, maybe two sometimes, of each concept. And let me start with graphical excellence. And again, I'm not doing service to this wonderful book by compressing the ideas to a bulleted list, which you probably know I would normally never even show you on a slide, but just to compress the words, here we go. Graphical excellence means you should really focus on showing the data. You should have the viewer think about substance and the details of the methodology or the design or how a graphic was produced really should fade into the background. You want them to understand the content. You want to avoid distortion. You don't want to accidentally uh, use graphics to give the ideas of, of incorrect proportions. We'll show some examples of that in a minute. You want to try to have a high, what's later called data density. You want to present many numbers in a small space, but again, without being confusing. And then the idea is to try to find trends or show trends or show the ability, ability to find trends uh, in a data set that makes them seem coherent. You want to encourage comparison. Tufti has a famous phrase, compared to what? And you should always ask whether or not a graphic you create uh, asks and answers that compared to what question. A really great graphic can show several levels of detail at once. And also, it's important to think about what the purpose of a graphic is. Is it exploration? Is it explanation? Are you trying to just tabulate numbers? Is it meant to be uh, beautiful? Is it, is it uh, for communication or for display or both? And then also you want the words and the numbers and the pictures, as we say in another video, to all be very closely integrated together. So let's just take a look at something that is a beautiful example of graphical excellence. This is a very often shown graphic from William Playfair, who has many, many beautiful examples from the 18th century that shows you a, a time series. and it includes a bar graph, a line graph, it has beautiful fill, it has watercolor on the histogram, things that would be a little bit hard to reproduce today. But look carefully at the top and you can see that it even includes the reigns of different monarchs over time. And what they're trying to show here is actually just the price of wheat, but they're trying to show the price of wheat compared with a lot of other things going on in society at the same time. And again, we're trying to keep this video short so I'd love to go into the details of the color choices and the line weights, but please just look at it. Pause the video and look on your own. This is a beautiful example of graphical excellence. Okay, so the next point here is graphical integrity and the lie factor. Here's a graphic that's not from Tufty's book. It's from the internet. And there are two graphics here, and they're talking about the atmosphere on Earth. And the one on the left is meant to give you a kind of schematic view of the different layers of the atmosphere. And so that first horizontal line is supposed to represent 10 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, and the next one 50 kilometers, the next one 100, and the next one 600. Hmm, okay, well that's not any kind of consistent scale. Okay, so here's the space shuttle uh, flying way up here, and it should be at hundreds and hundreds of kilometers, but it looks like if you just use this bottom one that it's only at tens. So like this little marker is 50 kilometers, so that should be 50, that should be 50, and we should be at 150, not 600. And this isn't some logarithmic scale either, it's a completely schematic scale. And then if you compare this to the graphic on the right and you take that full extent 600 kilometers of the atmosphere, that's how big it is 
compared to the Earth, that short orange line. But then if you look at the graphic itself, the circular one on the right, you see that they make it look like the atmosphere is hugely thick compared to the size of the Earth. And in fact, there are white puffy clouds floating what would be above 600 kilometers from the surface of the Earth if we took the one graphic on the left, literally. So I think you get the idea that you do not want to misrepresent uh, size scales in ways that could give people an extremely incorrect impression of, in this case, the thickness of the atmosphere. So that lie factor is a word that, or a phrase that Tufte uses to describe the distortion, uh, usually in, in sizes or in numbers, uh, that can happen when you do this in graphical representation. Okay, next is one that's almost self-explanatory. I love Tufty's word chart junk, which just means extra stuff on a plot that really shouldn't be there. And so his idea is that you subtract everything you possibly can from a chart until it makes sense. And so in the 10Q vids uh, video that's part of this series, you can see some ideas about how to subtract things from graphs. But here I'll just show you the before without showing you an after. But you can imagine how terrible it would be to try to interpret this just absolutely awful 3D pie chart that has all these labels and the labels don't even match the colors and there are all kinds of boxes around the labels that you don't need. You probably don't even need a pie chart. Anyway, I, I leave it to the, to the viewer to go ahead and remake this uh, chart, but I think you get the idea of uh, what you wanna get rid of. Okay, and so next we have data ink ratio. And that talks about something that you saw an example there in the chart junk uh, graphic uh, that was not quite as vivid as it did here. So here you have a bunch of points um, on a bar graph, and then you have a huge amount of writing without WWT, with WT, or without da, 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 repeated, 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 and a bunch of grid lines that you don't necessarily need. And this actually is a chart that uh, appears in a book by another visualization expert, Felice Frankel, uh, that's referenced down here. It's called Visual Strategies. And it's a chapter actually where I was asked to uh, provide an example of, uh, of kind of before and after graphic. And so this information here in the lower right is the same as the information in the upper left, but you notice that you can actually read the questions they're presented horizontally and that there's a whole lot less repetition uh, that you don't need and a whole lot fewer grid lines that you also don't need. And so the idea is to have something look, if you have a white background, as white as possible, um, but still present all the information. So that really is related to this concept of subtraction that we saw in the previous example. Okay, so now let's talk about multifunctioning graphical elements. And this has to do with being very clever. And you saw actually a small example of it um, in the graphical excellence uh, design by Playfair, where there were a lot of different symbols and a lot of different sources of information all on one graph. Um, but here you see it more vividly where something that is itself um, spatial, like the layout of a basketball court, has these symbols on it that are quote unquote graphical symbols, but they're also showing you the positions of players and where they took shots from. And this looks very complicated in that there are these little score boxes and, and summary statistics and that you can click on these different tabs. But this actually gets to another concept that we're not covering today, which is something that's meaningful to an expert as opposed to a novice. And again, that's covered in the 10Q Viz video. But here, in other words, if you know about basketball, this has a huge amount of information all in one place. And it's using a layout that would be familiar to someone who knows how to play basketball. Even the font that's used for the score is reminiscent of the old fashioned LED scoreboards. And so you immediately recognize these numbers as the score. So again, I will leave it to the viewer to look at this more carefully and see what a wonderful example it is. Okay, so now what about data density? Here's a plot of New York City's weather back in 1980. And you can see that there's, it's a little bit like the Playfair example in that there's a many different kinds of charts going on at once, but they're all linked together by this time axis. And there's a huge amount of data shown in this relatively clean plot. And so the more data you can show and have your graph not look complicated or unintelligible, uh, the better you're doing if you're trying to present a lot of information. 
Now, this is what I mean by complicated and possibly unintelligible. If you just glance at this, you can get that it has something to do with weather. And maybe, as I said in the basketball example, if you're a real expert, this is okay. But otherwise, I would say that these fonts are too small, there's too many symbols, there's too many graphs all at once. Again, if you're a weather nerd, this is great, but this data density principle can go too far if you're not careful. And then last but absolutely not least, I want to talk about Tufti's idea that he calls small multiples, which other people have given other names to and has been used for a long time. For example, by one of my great heroes of data visualization, Galileo Galilei, here are Galileo's observations of the turn out to be the moons of Jupiter. And here's his original notebook where the big symbol is Jupiter and the little asterisks are the moons. He cleans that up and makes a classic small multiples display in his cleaned up notes here where he has a time series of the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th of January in 1610 showing you the positions of Jupiter and its moons. And then in the book itself, this is a beautiful example of mixing the text and the graphics that was part of our graphical excellence discussion earlier and is, of course, the subject of another one of these videos about integrating uh, text, graphics, and um, uh, numbers. Uh, you see here in the book, uh, again, the sort of repetition of the same kind of graph. That's what we mean by small multiples. And then I want to show you just one example more of a similar idea. Uh, which we could call a composite table that'll give me an opportunity to just briefly tell you that it was 1995 that I went to one of Tufti's seminars where he was talking about the visual display of quantitative information and some of his other books. And um, at the end, I was so impressed by what he said that I mentioned that I had just made this table that you see on the right that was from a proposal I wrote in 1994 that had all these little graphical elements. By the way, this was kind of hard to do on a computer in 1994, um, but it had these uh, elements in the table and it used small multiples and, and uh, a number of the other principles that I had learned about that day. And he asked to see it. And so I emailed it to him and we became pen pals and I started teaching a course at Harvard based on his book. And then over time we became more and more familiar with each other and each other's work. And here's a picture of us uh, back in 2015 where I was honored to uh, be asked by Tufti to speak about my own work um, in San Francisco. So anyway, I hope that gives you uh, a little taste of these really, really core principles uh, that are in this wonderful book, which I recommend you completely read, The Visual Display of Quantitative Information. Tufti has written several other very informative books, and they're all great. And I'll remind you that we have many more videos available uh, to form this full Seeing More of the Universe series on YouTube and elsewhere. Thank you very much.